comes from somewhere, and the rules come from the federal level that says, here's how a flight school should operate. Here's the sort of background checks that have to take place. And so you can't get the government out of it wholesale, I'm not no matter what. That. Okay. One thing I do want to come back to, you were talking about how frustrated people are with flying, how businesses are choosing not to fly. That's not strictly a security issue. I mean, yes, that's part of the whole package of how unpleasant it is to fly right now. But the airlines, of course, are going through tremendous upheaval. People are having very unpleasant, you know, cutbacks. We talked the last time I was here about some of the um, staff on airlines cracking and right. kind of going overboard. So it's a larger it's a larger problem, and part of it is part of the private sector problem that we have to solve with air travel. It's not just TSA. All right, we're back with more Gang of Four on a Friday morning. Elaine Wolf, Joe Reinagle, Lyle Larson. It's 1043 on KTSA. Ten forty-eight on News Talk five fifty KTSA. Jack Riccardi, Gang of Four, on our gang today. Sports director at uh, Channel Five, Joe Reinagle, State Representative Elect Lyle Larson, and Elaine Wolf, freelance journalist. Um, Nancy Pelosi uh, is uh, very much in the news these days because she appears to, unless something has changed since yesterday, she appears to be campaigning for uh, holding on to her position as uh, leader of House Democrats now. She has the right to do it, certainly. Although recently the precedent has been, when you lose your leadership, lose your majority, you usually give up or walk away from your leadership position. Uh, she says um, that she believes uh, now more than ever, uh, d- Democrats in the House need her. Others are calling her toxic. <laughs> uh, I yeah. think the Republicans need her. I think she's great for the Republicans to keep around. Do the Democrats need Nancy Pelosi? Is this a good idea? No, uh, it, uh, not for I mean, you know. And and, and as as a, a conservative, I guess that's the way to throw that out now, right? Uh, I th- I'm all for it. Let her go for it because you know you want to change. I certainly do in the in the presidency. And and if she continues to be the face of the Democratic Party, I think it only hurts them. I honestly do. And I just don't. Very intelligent woman. I I, I believe that. And I think you know maybe her heart's in the right place. But uh, like it or not, she's just not a positive face to the rest of the country right now. Elaine, are these Democrats that are saying, we won't vote for her, I'm not going to support her, are they just whistling past the graveyard? I mean, are they really going to, when when push comes to shove, are they really going to stand up against her? I think it'll kind of depend what the signal from the top comes down as, honestly. But, I, you know, to me, she, I thought that she was very effective in many ways. And when you are when you are leading from the minority instead of from the majority, it's often a very different role you, pe- you play. And I think the public will perceive you differently as well. So I don't think we can say she'd be a disaster as the minority leader. So I, you know, and I also, it's crazy to have an election, honestly, two years after you've got a new president come in with a huge shift because people don't know what's happening yet. We're sort of midstream on a whole bunch of stuff. We don't know where we're going to be two years from now. So I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily counts against the Democrats if you've got her in there. You know, I love okay. the fact that, that, that everybody talks about how much they've done. And yeah, they've done a lot, but nobody wanted what they did. And that, that you've got to look at, at, at what happened. And yeah, they accomplished a lot, but it was a lot of nothing that anybody wanted. Well, let's take that apart a little bit. When you say no one wanted what they did, you're talking specifically about health care, right? Health care is one. Which is not, in fact, fully enacted yet by any means, so I don't think people know yet if they wanted it or not. Well, that's the whole problem. Nancy Pelosi doesn't know what it is either. I mean, right, we have to pass the bill before we know what's in it. And it's, you know, that kind of stuff is just ridiculous. I think we need health care reform. I don't think anybody argues that. But I think what we've got is is not what we need, and mm-hmm. I think that was made very clear. So when so when the Republicans say we're going to repeal health care, what do mm-hmm. you think about that? What is your? I think we should repeal health care and start over, and, and that's what I think. I think we should start over. We should know what we're talking about, know what's in the bill before it's passed. Is there anything from the current bill that you would take forward to a new bill? I'm, I, I'm sure there is, and I'll, I'll be the I I'll, I'll be the first. I think uh, I think uh, pre-existing conditions. I think that there's got to be something in there for for families that need uh, health care that can't get it with somebody with a pre-existing condition. I think is something. But I think hiring 16,000 IRS <laughs> agents and 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 this kind of thing. I mean, there's just so many things that are ridiculous about this. I like the way issue. you said it, Elaine. You're repealing health care. We're going to do away with health care. 
<laughs> I don't think that's exactly what's at issue here. Healthcare right? reform. Oh, yeah, okay. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Picky. You're so picky about these. I things. am a little picky yeah. about that. Yeah. You know, to hey. go back to your question, you know, as far as uh, Nancy Pelosi, for a lot of she's she's obviously the most polarizing uh, figure in politics today. Everything that the Republicans did, if you looked at all the commercials, it was based on the fact that they sided uh, with Pelosi on 90 percent of the votes or 95 percent of the votes. Uh, she needs to go away, and so do I mean, as far as I'm concerned, John Boehner needs to go away. Those are those are two of the folks, and I realize a lot of folks in the Republican Party think that John Boehner is the one that brought this uh, this revolution uh, together and, and and created this huge turnout. It wasn't John Boehner, and on the other side, it wasn't Nancy Pelosi. We need to have reasonable minds to work through some very difficult issues our country is challenged with, and I think both of them uh, are 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 polarizing and from the standpoint that if we're going to get these things done, it's not about winning and losing as a party we need to win as a country and and from my standpoint both of those folks uh they need to put their sabers away and we need to get some other folks in our uh, leadership speaking of of that let's talk about somebody a little closer to home lamar smith is now going to be the chairman of the house judiciary committee one of the most powerful people in the congress he tells the uh interviewers that he plans on a number of investigations and oversight committee actions against the Obama administration. Where is he getting the idea that what we want, that what we just signaled for, was a a year of investigations? Yeah. Where, where, Where is that coming from? I think that uh, that's the old school politics. You know, I think Lamar's been up there a long time. Uh, I, and for whatever reason, I don't think that's what people uh, people want right now. People want the government uh, to function, uh, function as a unit. And uh, we don't need to go on these witches. Uh, this is the kind I of mean, thing that's, that's going to give us a, a pendulum swing every two absolutely. years. Absolutely. Right. You know, Lamar, the, from the Judiciary Committee, the focus needs to be immigration. You know, from the standpoint of immigration reform, dealing with uh, with uh, trying to figure out how we're going to secure our border, and that should be uh, the the laser focus of the Judiciary Committee in Washington. And these witches hunt. You know, I just I'm I'm sick and tired of it from both sides of it because you're going to hear it on the other side in 2012. Uh, you know, I heard earlier this week that uh, there was a group of people suing President Bush for waterboarding and these other things. Let it go. I mean, we've got issues in front of us, and we don't need to look uh, retrospectively about everything that somebody supposedly has done. This Bush book, by the way, had an interesting revelation. Um, He reveals that uh, Mitch McConnell, the new, uh, well, not new, he's the continuing Senate Republican leader, uh, actually went to him before the 06 election and begged him to pull the troops out of Iraq to help the Republicans possibly pull out the 06 midterm election. Bush, of course, said no, not only no to that, but we're doing a surge next year. McConnell now claims to have favored the surge all along, but he's getting a lot of flack in Kentucky Mm. for having been on both sides of this. Here's another guy who I I think doesn't get it. You said old school. I think that's perfectly the right term. Uh, 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 McConnell, Boehner, Pelosi, none of these people can comprehend politically what just happened and what is going on. Well, yeah, people like Paul Ryan uh, from, from Wisconsin, he, he's a bright mind. He understands uh, the fiscal aspects he's of what a pariah our, in the Republican Party. And, you know, it's unfortunate. Right, you know, he is, though, he, right? he, Well, because he speaks outside of the leadership. And he's and telling I, them there's actually a way to do this if you want to do it. We can, we can eliminate this deficit, and he, they don't want to hear it. That's our leader. And people like Paul Ryan that are... Uh, they, they never pick as a leader the guy that tells them what they don't want to hear. Yeah, well, that's right? unfortunate. But those, a, those are the... I think that's what the American public wants, is somebody that's going to step outside of it and deal with the issues and not I worry about right. the partisan aspects of it. I it's actually don't whole, see... Oh, sorry. No, no you go ahead. What's well, the whole thing with, with when we were talking about earmarks earlier? It's got to be a <laughs> culture change in Washington. Absolutely. And until we get that, it's going to be politics as usual. And yeah. honestly, a big part of that's got to be campaign finance reform. Because you, when you say they never pick the guy who tells them what they don't want to hear. They never pick the guy or the woman who doesn't understand how the money relationships work, because that's a big part of the leadership's job, is to make sure that money comes in that then helps people get elected next time around. And until you actually can sever that, and that just got worse this past year, and it was so frustrating. I think finally the New York Times and the Washington Post did a whole series of really smart articles about Citizens United and about the corporate money in politics this time around, but it basically made no dent, I think, in the body politics. Who was was the largest outside contributor 
in the 2010 midterm elections. Are you going to tell me that it was, I don't know, who was it? Ask me. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's okay either. I think that's the problem is where does the money come from, where does it go, and what does it support? But if you if you combine all the corporate money and put that up against Ask Me, I don't think Ask Me can, put a, can hold a candle to that. It, it's so funny because this same debate was going on in the 08 and mm -hmm. when MoveOn.org and, and uh, a number of folks were funneling money you know, through a, a various means into campaigns. And now that it's turned and the more conservative groups are using those same mechanisms to get their candidates. It's in. So the debate's going to go on. But whether on is largely funded by, in fact, primarily funded by individuals. It's not a corporate funneling group. So I don't think it's fair to compa compare MoveOn.org to some of these other PACs that pull in corporate money. Well, uh, trust me, the, the, on the Democratic Party, they were immersed in, in corporate money. Uh, they were in uh, the leadership. Yeah, and I agree. This isn't a partisan yeah. issue. This is a problem with Congress in general. Mm -hmm. So I and I don't think if we don't solve that, you're not going to see the sort of leadership change that you want to see, and that's just a fundamental. You know, All right, we got more Gang of Four coming up. It's 10:57 on News Talk 550 KTSA.